All right, everyone, it's mimetic occultism time. We have to talk about the very first scheduled performance, the, the, the circus performance, with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The first time that they're going to be on stage in the official capacity together, him with his running mate, his proud and empowered black uh, uh, running mate. Uh, that's very progressive and, you know, threw a lot of people in prison for pot possession. Uh, but we, we're not allowed to talk about that. She doesn't want to talk about the past, only the future and how she's going to make, she's going to change. It's going to be totally different from how she was at shit fuck in the past. Anyway, <laughs> what happened? They hold the event and the power goes out and the AC stops working and it was basically a freak show. This, this is the perfect symbol for the Biden campaign. Which is that unless shit was completely screwed up, nobody would even take it seriously as a campaign. He's literally not campaigning, to any great degree, and I guess they're holding this rally with fucking ten people in attendance. Um, is constantly just being a chucklehead, kneeling and wearing the mask and spouting off vague platitudes about Orange Man, and that's basically his only platform, and everything's terrible. But I'm not going to tell you how I would make it better. By the way, don't ask for my Senate records. Nobody would take it seriously at all if it weren't a, a, a never-ending tidal wave of propaganda, which is what it is, to convince the American people that things are messed up, not because, you know, blue states have destroyed their own economies and are trying to steadily continue destroying and holding back the economy of the United States, an epidemic that nobody could have stopped and that Trump initially reacted to and was called a bigot for doing so, so he's more hesitant to lock things down thereafter, uh, to try to convince them that that's, that's all Trump's fault. Even though it's not, it's, it's clearly other parties that are often uh, anti-Trump. Nobody otherwise would take seriously the Biden campaign. But I thought this was interesting when, so when I got tipped off the other day about this, I chuckled because I thought this is like, this is like, it brings me back, it harkens back to Keck and literal mimetic occultism. By the way, available on Amazon, authored by yours truly. Very good book, very well received. Uh, I think I've sold about three, 4,000 copies of it actually. That's not bad. Uh, <laughs> this is this is meme magic. Keck brought the lights down. Now, of course, wh when you say things like that, you have to make it clear that you're being kind of tongue in cheek because otherwise you'll end up with like a right wing watch hit piece saying, oh, he has devolved into madness and he's invoking this evil racist Egyptian frog deity that's linked to white supremacist symbol according to the SPLC, Pepe, which is all a pile of steaming horse crap. It's interesting how propaganda repeated over and over and over again. Uh, quite often it becomes accepted by people for political reasons. But take a look, link in the description. I, when I saw that, it's like the funniest fucking thing that I could ever, ever imagine. Because it's just perfect. The timing is perfect. Because it's not just like, oh, well, Biden and Harris were in an event and, you know, the lights went out and it's really hot and the AC stopped working and people were uncomfortable. That's funny, maybe. But, I mean, that can happen at a Trump rally, too. Although I don't think it has. Uh, by the way, the legacy media would report on it widely. If, like, if a light falls down at a Trump event, then they immediately start speculating, oh, is it a saboteur? Uh, maybe Trump, Trump uh, skeeved out on the maintenance workers, and one of them must have rigged it as a joke. Then they say, like, weird shit. They don't even report on this, though. I would think that would be more funny, because it's literally the first time that they've appeared together. It's like the gods are displeased at this pairing. They believe that a couple of tough-on-crime 90s-era neoliberals are probably bad for the land of the free and the home of the brave, and so they decided to shut down the electricity there. Is it a heat wave in the U.S. like it is here? Here it's still pushing 90 degrees. I, have, I, I was told it would rain and get cooler today. So far, uh, no good. Uh, I mean, this is so great. Biden keeps having problems, and it, sometimes it's not even him. But the real thing is, like, when he's at a rally, the, the, the big problem usually is he says something stupid. And Kamala does this, too. Like, there was that one time, it was, I think she was still in the primaries, and I can't remember what they were questioning her on. And she got all, like, flummoxed and couldn't answer the question. And, and, and it just looked wrong. It was sort of like Elizabeth Warren when she was called the, the original Rachel Dolezal by Charlemagne the God. And it was sort of a deer-in-the-headlights moment. And Kamala had several of these during the debates. Remember when Tulsi Gabbard all but fucking crippled her? By the way, she was already on the way down when that happened, and I predicted, of course, that that would coincide with the beginning of the end of her campaign. I wonder if Tulsi Gabbard's going to sell out completely and start gushing over Kamala like Sean King and every other liberal has. They all hated Kamala Harris before. Oh my God, she's been, she's going to upstage. Now, if she's chosen, she's going to upstage Biden. She's got this weird, you know, uh, criminal prosecution record with tens of thousands of of convictions. She she literally withheld evidence to keep a man in prison. 
Um, uh, I, I think on murder charges, if I remember correctly, to keep him from getting exonerated. She said that if you let go of too many people, there wouldn't be enough prison labor. Like, like she's, she's that sort of person, but they keep trying to rebrand her now as she's a likable person. She's like your, your cookie baking grandma or something. She's nice and, and fluttery and progressive and she loves the gays and, she, and, and all that. It's like very, very prepackaged sort of apple style rounded corner puzzle piece bullshit if that makes any sense. It, it's the standard sort of propaganda that we actually get from corporations now. And they realize it works. Tug on people's heartstrings. Oh, here, uh, here we want to start a war. And, and the act that we're going to use to, is called the, the Happy Children and Kittens Act. Oh, yeah, it includes bombing a million people. But, you know, you, you hate children if you don't want to vote for it. <laughs> you hate kittens. This is the Cute Puppies and If You Oppose It, You Kick Puppies Act. And it's actually a new taxes. And we're going to put you in prison for extended periods of time. That's sort of how they've rebranded her. But they're doing the same with Biden. And so when things like this happen, like little things that just show the incompetence of the people around him, because, you know, they had to handle the, the system, the lighting and the AC and so forth. And obviously they can't do that. And this is, again, the optics are terrible because it's the first main event that they've had together. She just barely got chosen as his running mate. So when little things like that happen, I think that it's, it's absolutely glorious. It's wonderful to see, and I hope it happens many more times. That's about all. Peace out.